Now that we talk a lot about courage in sport, but I'm sure, I'm not sure that that word will do our next winner justice. She is simply superhuman. This is her story. Cor was the life and soul of everything. She collected for charity, she looked after people. She was the person doing the charity runs and the marathons and crazy cycles and, and whatnot. Then she developed the sepsis, which is a horrible thing. It's unbelievable how quickly it develops. You know, you can't think that today you're fine and tomorrow you're dying. People were coming in from left, right and centre to try and save her. But they all knew that she wasn't. They all knew that she was gone. I had three weeks unconscious, so I missed most of the fuss. And after six weeks, my hands were completely shriveled up, black, charcoal-like, and my feet were, were getting the same way. And we had to face amputations. And I remember squealing, and how could I be a mum? How could I ever look after my son? Nobody seemed to be able to tell me what life could be like for me. We realised the gap was there, that maybe I could do that. And that really became the start of this charity. Finding Your Feet was helping amputees, trying to keep them positive. We were so determined to get people out of the house and doing some sports. And before you knew it, we had the Pilates club and the swimming club and the climbing, skiing, go-karting to get overcome that hurdle of isolating yourself. Sport is a really powerful tool within the amputee community, simply because it helps you prove that you are not limited by your uh, disability. We started five years ago with five people and now there's over 500 that come to over 60 clubs a month. I used to be one of these people that thought, oh sport, what's that? But now I just love sport and this is going to be a purpose to get up in the morning. Every year I've done a big challenge to commemorate the, the loss of your limbs and the fact that you're still alive. It was a record that I was the first female quadruple amputee up Ben Nevis and uh, Kilimanjaro. She's an inspiration to us all because we don't classify as disabled. We just take ourselves as a team of human beings. Find your feet now raised over 1.2 million. All the fundraising and the grants we receive are changing our amputees' lives because it allows them to get out to these sports free of charge and live their life again. After five years of waiting in January, I got these fantastic nearly new hands and I'm delighted to be able to do so much more now. She said, I am not going to be disabled. Anything I could do before, I'm going to do now. And she has gone on to prove that she can do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Corinne Harden. <laughs> you all right? You're not a fraud. See, this is the thing about Corinne, we've met before. Uh, she just said she's a fraud up here. Uh, see, the reality is you're not, uh, but you're just incredibly humble about what you've been through. But what you've been through is just the most extraordinary circumstances. Um, I, I, I don't know where to start, really. First and foremost, you're a mum. And how's it been, being a mum and going through what it is that you've been through? Well, I think that's what stabilises you, isn't it? You, you, you can't get down, you can't hide under the duvet. You've got to get up and, and, and do what most mums do and get the kid out to school. And I particularly wanted my son to see a mum who could rather than a mum who couldn't. Well, she's certainly a mum that does. <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't stop. Um, he must be incredibly proud of you. No, no, I'm just mum. No, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I have to ask as well, because you've had this extraordinary hand transplant as well, um, which looks remarkable. How has it been? Uh, I, it, the start of the year was really tough. They did say to me in the beginning it would be a year of hard work, but I didn't think they meant me. <laughs> and I ignored all that. So first six months I was in and out hospital. I'm immune suppressed, so I get everything going. Uh, and I was really, really poorly. But the hands never, ever let me down. And... Um, after June, July, started to feel it myself again. So they're really coming on. I'm so, so grateful to the very brave family that made that really tough decision. So I... Absolutely. So I, I, do what I, do, I do what I can to campaign. Um, having hands for me wasn't life-saving, but this woman also gave her organs and that did save lives. And I know there's people dying every single day. I wanna do what I can to help. I, I, I wonder as well, though, Corinne, because you never let anything get in the way, what sort of a difference has it made? I mean, is, it, uh, sort of, is there little things that you sort of suddenly notice you can do now that you'd sort of forgotten that you could do? It's massive for me, but I, I guarantee you the vast majority of people wouldn't even think about it. But just for me to be able to do things with 
one hand is, is, is just absolutely incredible. Today, I, I was quite tickled thinking I actually took my phone and I put it in my pocket and then I could take it back out again. I've not been able to do that for six years. So just little things like that. Just, just a miracle, isn't it? Absolute miracle. Thank you very much, Tom. You've done so much. Is there plans to do more? Have you got a new challenge on the horizon? Well, I, I, things wouldn't be very good if I didn't have some kind of challenge, <laughs> but I'm going to have to build it up. I wasn't allowed to do a lot for a while. So sure. this year's challenge was um, I used to be a trucker, so I got back in a truck a couple of weeks ago, so I was able to do um, drive the truck, and I need to get back in a motorbike again, so if anyone wants to lend me their bike, please, <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> but um, I've signed up. I can't even I believe I'm saying this in front of... Josh and his super marathons and everything, but I'm, I'm signed up to do a half marathon in, in March, and that means training right through the ice and snow. And yeah. So, um, thank you. I'm trying to do that with, um, with a set of blades on that I've not been able to wear for a year. So, uh, yeah, it's tough enough for me, and then, you know, once you've done a half marathon, you know what's coming after that. So we'll, we'll just see. Well, Josh has got 24 to do in 24 days, so I'm sure he'd be keen to have you at some point. <laughs> Definitely he would. <laughs> now then, before we present you, we do have a little message from someone who can't sadly be here, but has been very inspired by your courage. Hi there, Corrine. This is Vinnie Jones. You have a brilliant night, um, and hopefully the rest of us can carry on your courageous fight and, and show that the will to live and the will to go on and the, the will to be happy can um, spread a, a, around the country. Um, you enjoy your night, my love, and uh, I'm just sending you lots of love. Um, you're an inspiration to me, especially. Good night. One of your supporters there, of which there are many, <laughs> and obviously everyone is very proud uh, that you are here tonight, as are we. Uh, we have an Olympic great and a fellow Sporting Inspiration winner to present your award. Uh, please welcome previous Pride of Sport winner, racing driver Billy Munger, and with him, an Olympic champion who has taken on plenty of gruelling physical challenges of his own. It's James Cracknell. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I was sat on the side there listening to your story, and I, I'm a fellow amputee myself, and the way you describe yourself and how humble you are with how inspiring you've been to, your kids must absolutely adore you and look up to you. And I know my mum, when I look at you, I see so much in, that I see in my mum in terms of her spirit and how she handled my accident, the positivity and uh, the willingness to live life that she gave to me, and that's really... Tra You've summed it up perfectly with how you, your spirit is, and uh, yeah, I was just super inspired by you. It's a, you know, the whole evening is amazing, and Corinne, your example of, of exactly that, and, and in society we're so quick to put limits on what anyone should be able to do, and it's people like you who say, no, you're not going to tell me what I can do, I'm going to show you what I can mm. do. Yeah, we can all live like that. So we thank certainly you. can, yeah. Uh, Corin, you, you have achieved some extraordinary challenges. I've got a challenge for you tonight. Any chance you can teach James how to dance? <laughs> That's way beyond you. <laughs> way beyond you. Even beyond you. Uh, James, Billy, thank you so much for being here at this evening's Fentless Award. And also, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Corin Hutton.